According to Luke, praise to you, you, Jesus Christ. Using a parable, Jesus told his followers they needed to always pray and never give up. Once there was a judge in a certain city who feared no one, not even God. A widow in that city kept coming to the judge with a complaint. Protect me from my enemy, the woman would say over and over again. For a time, the judge refused her, but finally he thought, I care little about God or people, but this widow keeps bothering me, so I will protect her. Otherwise, she'll keep coming back again and again until she wears me out. Jesus said, listen to what the judge said. Will not God protect his chosen ones who keep praying to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? No, I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them quickly. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find any faithful followers left in the world? My friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. So our readings this morning, as I mentioned, carry the theme of perseverance. The Israelites have engaged in, in a battle with the Amalekites, and as long as Moses holds his hands raised high, the Israelites would advance in battle. But as Moses grew tired and his perseverance waned, things for the Israelites on the battleground were not looking so good. So Aaron and Hur chose to aid Moses so he could persist in holding his hands high. And the Israelites persevered in battle. Luke's gospel today seems to be another example of perseverance. The essence of the parable of the widow and the judge is that Jesus has encouraged his disciples to pray and never lose heart. The judge refused to hear the widow's cause because at one day, the judge submitted to the widow's cries because of her persistence. Her frustration of being cast aside didn't halt her persistence. Jesus tells us that God hears the pleas of those who persist and call out to him day and night. Those who persevere and storm heaven. The widow persevered. Sometimes people discuss their prayer life with me and they're angry or frustrated. They'll say, what's the use of praying to if God doesn't hear me? I'm convinced he doesn't hear me because he hasn't answered my prayers. After persevering for so long, deep down, we might be hoping for an immediate answer. In 1 Thessalonians, St. Paul tells us, pray without ceasing. But what he doesn't say is stop praying if your answer doesn't come right this minute or soon. Again, perseverance. Jesus taught us that prayer absolutely matters to God. After all, prayer is our way of raising our hearts to God. Prayer is also a way for God to communicate with us. The difference, though, is that God might communicate in the not most obvious of ways. He may bless us in short order. Or as I say, sometimes there's crickets. We don't hear a thing. An answer doesn't come. Yet when an answer does come, how we're blessed could be quite different than what we ask for. And that is the mystery of God. But to disengage ourselves from praying because an answer has not yet come or it's not to our liking, we have chosen to cease praying and hence we've chosen to shut out God from, commu from our communication 
with him. There are no bargaining chips that can be used with God or a magic formula that might entice God to respond to our prayer. I liken this to a vending machine. Think about a vending machine. If we walk up, we drop a couple of coins in, push a button, and voila, the machine releases whatever we ask, however we push that button. Our relationship with God is just more than a vending machine. Our relationship with God is our persistence. We cannot know God's mind. Growing in our faith and love for him leads to our growing in trust of him. Trusting that God has our best interests in store. We may persevere in prayer and innocently ask him for something that only God knows will not be good for us. But we can't see it. But we need not lose heart. What God has in store for us is all goodness, and even for the good of the whole, possibly, the good of others in the process. As we persist in prayer, we may reap blessings of something vastly better or different than we could have ever imagined for ourselves. No matter how we're blessed, prayers keep us connected with God's grace of understanding about our unanswered prayers. We can grow and come to realize that God's wisdom is much greater than ours ever could be. He knows which doors to open, and he also knows which doors to close. In our perseverance in prayer, and at the core of our relationship with God lies faith and trust, but also at the core lies patience. God is all loving and so incredibly patient with us, but are we as patient with him? For some of us, patience was not on our life's menu. It doesn't come easily. It sure doesn't for me. Not even when, it's, when it has to do with God. Trusting and believing, though, that God does hear us as we make our requests. And that the grace of understanding that God's time is not always our time. That our timing might always not always sync up with God. With patience, we might even go deeper into a state of surrender of God, your will, and not mine. Perseverance in prayer, then, is a chain of grace in persisting and persevering. Grace in having faith and trusting. Grace as we stretch ourselves to be patient with God. And in that stretching, we are led to ultimate grace of surrender. In our perseverance of our relationship and communication with God, we may promise God and ourselves that we will persist in prayer. We'll keep those conversations with God going. But then, how quiet are those communications? How quiet are we in prayer? But Mother Barb, you just said that we need to communicate with God. Yes, if we're communicating, but how can we be quiet? And yes, absolutely, prayer is our communication with God, but it's a two-way communication with God. Even relationships cannot, human relationships cannot grow when only one of the parties is talking. God seeks to get a word in edgewise, and as we persevere in prayer, the talking can't all be ours. Think back to when you attended school. Ever have a teacher come into a classroom at the beginning of class and then just stand there, looking at the noisy students but saying nothing? Meanwhile, all the students are engaged in their own little noisy conversations. And the teacher, rather than scream to everyone to stop talking and quiet down, the 
teacher begins talking very softly, almost inaudibly. And then it takes quite a while for the students to recognize that the teacher had said anything at all. The students had to stop talking in order for the teacher to be heard. As we persist in our prayer life, we also need to persevere in the quality time that we offer to God, not getting into life's distractions that take away from that two-way relationship, not giving into the noise in our heads. Patiently wait for that still, small voice for whenever it comes, for however God chooses to come to us. Trust and believe and never give up on prayer. Persevere because God does have things to say to us when we're quiet enough to hear them. And yes, he does hear us and he will answer according to the time he knows is best for us. With patience, may we surrender to that waiting if wait we must. And so, my friends, I leave you with my own testimony. God does answer prayers. But if our timing and God's timing are out of sync, God's answer might just be one word, slow. If we believe we want what we want, versus what God believes we need doesn't line up, God might respond with three words. No, but grow. And in our perseverance in prayer and as the timing becomes right, we can trust that God, as Jesus said in today's gospel, that he will answer. And he'll answer with just two words. Let's go. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.